وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala uh, today I want to talk about a very important topic which is uh, major sins This topic, my beloved brothers and sisters, I find it very important that we always remind ourselves the severity and the danger of major sins. We are now living at a, we're living in a time when committing sins has not only become prevalent, but it's also become public. People will do sins openly, in public. They will do it on social media and share it. They will not feel any shame with what they are doing. It was a very hard time to live, to see that taking place. I remember many years back, you would see a Muslim brother drinking alcohol. But the way he would drink the alcohol is that he would pour the alcohol into a cola, Coca-Cola can or a Coca-Cola bottle to hide it. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing. But whilst the person is hiding the sins, there's something still there. That person is, they know it's bad, they know it's evil, they know they shouldn't be doing it, and they're hiding it. So there's some khayr there, no doubt. There is khayr, it's very little, but there's khayr there. And now it's different. The person will drink, the brother will drink khamar in public, and he will hold a bottle in front of you. It doesn't matter anymore. Many years back, if you looked at Western countries like Canada, UK, and the kids on the streets would always respect the practicing people. They would respect the practicing community. So if a sister was wearing a hijab, he would respect her. If a brother was wearing a thobe and he had a bid, he was respected. A brother on the street would respect him. We are now living at a time And that doesn't exist, or it's very little. And I was shocked to know of a situation where uh, young youths came into the masjid to stab another Muslim who now started to practice. But because this brother has now left his area and come to another area, they've heard that he's here and he's in the masjid. They went into the masjid in order to stab him. My, I was lost of words. Are we living at that time? Yes. The evil and the munkarat are public. Public's display, no problem. The same with the sisters. I remember one time in school, there was a, a Muslim practicing sister in my class. What she would do is, she would take off her hijab when she comes to school. So she would wear it from home. When she comes uh, to school, she'll take it off, she'll put it in the bag, and she'll sit in the class with no hijab on. And she would always look at me and say to me, listen, please don't tell my mom. If you ever see her, if you ever see my family members, don't tell them that I take off my hijab. Now, the story is different. The sister will take off her hijab in front of you, doesn't care, she will take off in front of her mom, she will leave the house with not wearing hijab, wearing tight clothes. And the list goes on, brothers and sisters. So this is a very worrying time, a very worrying time to live at, or to live in a time where doing the evil is fine. There's no problem with it. Who cares? People share it on public platform. I was shocked, and I'll tell you this honestly, I was shocked when I found out that Muslim sisters, not Muslims, 
would marry non-Muslim men, knowing he's a non-Muslim. And she would marry that non-Muslim man. And other sisters would defend that by saying, what's, what's, what's wrong with that? Why can't she marry a non-Muslim man? It is gharib. It's gharib. It's shocking. I saw a time when a, a sister may not even be practicing her deen. She may not even be holding on to her deen like that. But a non-Muslim guy, guy would approach her and she said, listen, I'm Muslim. I can't marry you. I can't have a relationship with you. And this is very saddening. Very, very saddening. And the brothers, the same thing. Evil and munkarat is on display. A brother would commit zina with a woman. He wouldn't even feel shy to tell the people what he just did. He'll come and he will tell you. He won't even hide it from you. He'll say, I did this last night. I did this last night. I did this last night. I, I, I acted like this last night. Allah, you brothers and sisters. It's sad because when that happens and those sins become public and people just do it and it becomes the norms, the punishment of Allah when it comes subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not only going to destroy those people who are doing the wrong. It's going to destroy everybody. It's going to destroy every single body. So my aim and objective, inshallah ta'ala, is to shed light on this issue of sins. And the way that I plan to do it, inshallah ta'ala, and the way that I plan to go through it is by writing the main points that I want to cover, inshallah ta'ala. So not only do you know the severity of it and the dangers of it and the consequences of it, but what I also want you to do is to, inshallah ta'ala, know how in great detail. I could talk and you might just listen and just leave. But if I write for you, what I'm trying to say, it will sit better in your hearts and your mind. And as the saying goes, a picture draws more than a thousand words. So if I draw the idea and the concepts and the evidences and the proofs on paper for you, inshallah ta'ala, not only would you know it and not only would it stick to your heart and your mind, inshallah ta'ala, you will be able to, sh to share it with others, inshallah ta'ala. So let's inshallah ta'ala take it bin al kareem. Everyone look at my notes inshallah ta'ala. I want to start by saying, let's look at the verse of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Qala Allah ta'ala, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he said. Qala Allah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said. And let's look at this verse. Everyone, inshallah ta'ala, students of knowledge, benefit and right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Thumma awrathana al-kitab Thumma awrathana al-kitab al-lazina Thumma awrathana al-kitab al-lazina istafayna من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو ال... ذلك هو الفضل الكبير
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in this verse, let's look at the verse. Allah says, ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَا الْكِتَابَ الَّذِي نَصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا Allah is telling us subhanahu wa ta'ala, after, يعني the word thumma in the Arabic language, it's used for sequence and order. This, the word thumma in the Arabic language, it's used for التَّرْتِيب taqib. There is sequence and there is, there's order. For example, when you say جَاءَ زَيْدٌ وَعَمْرٌ it shows that Zayd came before Amr. It shows. Sorry, Thumma Amr. The word Thumma shows that Zayd came first and then Amr came after. But if you say Ja'a Zaydun wa Amr, the wow doesn't show who came first. It just shows that they both came, but it doesn't show who came first. So Thumma here, Allah is saying after that, Awrathna al Kitaba. Come to the page, inshallah. Thumma Awrathna al Kitaba. We inherited the book. Thumma Awrathna al Kitaba. Those who we chose. Min ibadina. From our slaves, our servants. Allah categorized in this verse, and I'm going to write it down for you. He categorized the people into three. Okay? Allah says, which the first one is Adnaha, the lowest of them. We're going to start with, this is the one Allah started with, which is Avalim, Avalimu li nafsihi, the one who is. The one who is oppresses to himself. What does it mean? Al-zalimu li nafsihi. It means, wa huwa, wa huwa alladhi, he is the one. Yadhlimu nafsahu. Bir. Bir tikab. Al-Ma'asi Wal-Atham Al-Lati Hiya Dun al-Kufri So uh, the first group which is Adnaha what does it mean Adnaha? So let's put our tahrik on Adnaha Adhalimu Li nafsihi Wa huwa Wa huwa alladhi Yadhalimu Nafsahu Birtikabi Al-ma'asi Wal-athami التي هي دون الكفر. The first group Allah mentioned in the verse when He categorized the people. أدناها the lowest of them is what الظالم لنفسه the one who oppresses himself. How? Listen, read it here. وهو الذي يظلم نفسه. It is the one who oppresses himself by doing what بارتكاب المعاصي by falling into sins which is below disbelief so he's committing sins okay and those sins that he's committing hasn't reached the level of kufr the second category inshallah ta'ala is is which is the middle and that is Al-Muqtasid. And that is Wa huwa alladhi. It is the one Yuqimu Yuqimu al-Furud Wa yaj Tanibu Al Kabair Wakathiran Wakathiran Minas Sagair Wahadhuhu Wahadhuhu Minas Nawafili Kalid
فهو فهو غير مجتهد في عبادة ربه بل عمله في ذلك The middle one is what? أوسطها is the middle one which is what? المقتصد وهو الذي يقيم الفروض ويجتنب 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 that's how it's meant to be الكباء الكبائر اي نعم وكثيرا so you forgot the dot here وكثيرا من الصغائر he leaves off many of the sins وحظه من النوافل قليل فهو غير مج تهيد في عبادة رب رب به بل عمله في ذلك is what قصدا what is this one this is the second category he's in the middle so what he does he makes sure he comes with the obligation. So what he does is, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُقِيمُ الْفُرُوبَ He fulfills the obligation. وَيَجْتَنِبُ الْكَبَائِرَ And he stays away from the major sins. وَكَثِيرًا مِنَ الصَّغَائِرِ And he tries to stay away from many of the minor sins. وَحَظُّهُ مِنَ النَّوَافِرِ His portion when it comes to voluntary acts are little. He rarely does righteous deeds, uh, voluntary acts. فَهُوَ غَيْرُ مُجْتَهِدٍ He doesn't strive. فِي عِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ to worship his Lord, Allah subhanahu. وتعالى. He doesn't. بل عمله في ذلك قصدا. He just tries to stay in the middle. He just wants to flow in the middle. That's what the ayah means. ومنهم مقتصد. The third inshallah ta'ala that I'm going to mention and conclude with for today is um, another group. Okay. Write with me inshallah ta'ala. Everyone write inshallah ta'ala. And this is the group which we call علاها. May Allah make us from them. سبحانه وتعالى. اللهم جعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين. And they are a sabiq. They are a sabiq bil khayrat. They rush to the good. They hasten to the good. Wa huwa al mubarriz al ladhi taqaddama. المجتهدين في طاعة ربه وأداء ما لزمه من فضاء من فراء إضه This is the third category. Write it down. A'laha. And this is As-Sabiqu. Bil-Khayrati. Wa huwa. And he is. Al-Mubarrizu. Put a shadda on there if you need. Al-Mubarrizu. Al-Ladhi taqadda ma shadda there. Al-Mujr. تهدين في طاعة ربه وأداء أما وأداء في طاعة ربه وأداء يعني نعم ما لا زي ما هو من فرائضه 
The third category is the highest of them all. And that is A'laha. The highest of them is As-Sabiq bil Khayrat. He hastened towards the good. وَهُوَ الْمُبَرِّزُ He is the one who passes everybody else. الَّذِي تَقَدَّمَ الْمُجْتَهِدِينَ He passed those who are striving hard. فِي طَاعَةِ رَبِّهِ in obeying his Lord. وَأَدَاءِ مَا لَزِمَهُ مِنْ فَرَائِضِهِ And he fulfills that which is obligatory on him from the obligation. So he's doing voluntary acts. He's doing obligatory acts. He is not holding back. The last point I want to mention in the last two minutes, inshallah ta'ala, is my beloved brothers and sisters, now that we know the people are these three types, based on the ayah, I will not be talking about in this series the second category, and I will not also be talking about the third category. I will be fo- focusing on these people. Again, all the three groups are min ahli al-Islam. All of them are Muslims. Walillahi alhamdu wal minna. That's why this ayah, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shaqiqiyu, he used to cry when he, whenever, whenever he would read it. Because Allah says, ثُمَّ أَوْرَثَنَا الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِي وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَصِي وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ After what does it say? ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْكَبِيرُ جَنَّاتِ All of them are going to be from the people of Jannah, inshallah. They're not disbelievers. Remember the definition we gave for الظالم. الظالم لنفسي وهو الذي يظلم نفسه بارتكاب المعاصي والأثام التي هي دون الكفر. So he's not a kafir. And he's the lowest of them all. So they're all Muslims. So we're going to focus on that first group of people, inshallah ta'ala, in this series. Now brothers and sisters, those people who commit sins, major sins, and, may even, and they are also consistent upon minor sins, some certain minor sins that might be consistent on, are three types of people, and I'm going to conclude there, inshallah ta'ala. So you know which group I'm going to be talking about from amongst those who are ظالمون لنفسه. There are three types. Okay, when it comes to those who commit major sins or those who are consistent upon minor sins. The first one is أن يفعل The person does the sin. Okay, and he does the kabair, the major sin he's doing, but he does it mustatiran. He's hiding it. Okay. So he's mustatiran. He hides it biha. He doesn't want people to see him doing it. I'm not going to be talking about that group. Which is a yaf'ala, the person does the al kaba'ira mustatiran biha. He's hiding it, he doesn't want people to see him doing it. I'm not going to be talking about that category, they're not my concern. Okay, and I'm not saying they're not, it's not serious, it's not a bad thing, but that's not my concern. The ones I'm going to be focusing on, I'm going to tell you, inshallah ta'ala. The second group, again, everyone, the second group is an. You jahira biha and you jahira biha is that the person does it openly and you jahira means that the person is now coming out in public and doing it in public. Okay, that is the group I want to focus on. The last group that exists when it comes to major sins, again, everyone write it down is an Yazida. على المجاهرة بها الدعوة إليها. The second group is أن يزيد على المجاهرة تي بها. The third group is those people, they've even even gone worse. They're not just doing their sins publicly. They're calling other people to it. They're propagating it. They're encouraging other people to do this. They're saying, dress like this. Look like this. If you want this lifestyle, you can. You can be free. You don't have to, you don't have to be in the shackles of hijab, for example, they will say. Or you don't have to follow a book that was written in the ancient time, a medieval book. You can be liberal and free. So inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to also be dealing with those group of people as well. And those two, those two groups, or mainly the third group, because the third group encompasses the second group, and even more. I will be talking about those people inshallah ta'ala, the severity of their action, 
the consequences of what they are doing. And if they don't repent and come back to Allah wa ta'ala, where they could end up being. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgives us for our sins and our shortcomings and our errors. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah gives me the strength, the ability to be able to convey this series in the best manner and to be able to give it justice. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tabiruka.